In this video, we are deep diving into new world builder or with its official name Patchwork feature by Midjourney storytelling team. Let's jump in. Patchwork is a collaborative AI supported infinite canvas and it's an experimental narrative driven image generation experience for creating fictional worlds. Users can move around the canvas you can zoom in and zoom out on the canvas. When you first join Patchwork, you are in a lobby space with sandboxes where people have created portals to their own worlds. Users can click on a portal to travel to another world or create their own portals to new world. So this lobby experience resembles a gaming lobby where all gamers wait before they jump into one of the worlds. Patchwork currently only works with Google login. The tool can be accessed at patchwork.midjourney.com and tool pretty much feels like an MVP, the version one type of a launch of a new prompting experience for Midjourney. This world builder tool resembles or maybe inspired by a comfy UI user interface. It's also a little bit similar to Miro in the context of collaboration. As you can see, it's a canvas type of UI where you can create characters, events, places, and you can link these characters to events and cluster them together. And you end up with some type of mood board at the end where you have characters, events, places, and vice versa. Now let's create a new world from scratch so you can see the full experience. To start creating a new world, we will select portal and add here a new portal. Once you do that, we jump into this screen where you can see all existing worlds and some of them are editable, some just uh, simply private that we cannot even see them. So you can see that hundreds of people, if not thousands, already started creating some worlds here testing and experimenting with this new approach. And we will create a new world, so I say let's go. One thing you need to notice that since this is like an MVP kind of approach, there isn't a strong navigation to just quickly scroll through worlds or simply go back where you started. It's a bit chaotic at the moment, so be prepared for that. So we end up in the world creation screen where we will type our initial prompt to kickstart our world. This prompt and the first four images will set the tone for the rest of our world. So I wrote cinematic photo of a female warrior and a dragon posing together in a realistic fantasy world. You can use existing style reference codes for this initial prompt or you can turn on or off your style personalization. It's up to you. You can of course choose from these pre-populated styles as well. You can see a bunch of them by clicking on show me more and they appear randomly here. If you like any of these aesthetics, you can go with it. Okay, for the first example, we will create something realistic. So I hit create world. So then our world is ready. Um, normally it creates four images at the beginning, but surprisingly two of them had not safe for work content. Uh, so I deleted them to comply with YouTube guidelines. Um, so we have these two. So you have this personalization card or profile card, which you can keep it or delete it. Actually, it has not much context to the, our workflow, so I will remove it. On the left side, we have toolbox. And once you generate your new world, you can start adding characters, factions, prompts. I think character, event, and place is very straightforward. Prop is an artifact. It can be a gun, a sword, any kind of object. Faction is a divergence in the story or conflict. It can be used like a conflict in the story or maybe a new context or a new event. For example, we can add a character to our canvas here. And at the moment while I'm recording this tutorial, there is an incredible amount of lag. So when I click on an action, it takes a couple of minutes for system to actually do something with that. So apologies for this. But simply I managed to create a character scrap. All of these labels are called scraps. And when you create a new character, it comes with this empty canvas, this little empty scrap here. This empty scrap will be populated with details of my title, which I will write here. So at the beginning, I won't generate any image. I will be just building my storyline, a simple storyline, of course. I will proceed with this character here. After giving my character a name, when you click on light bulb here, it will populate the scrap with the text. Sun Yui was born with the rare ability to communicate telepathically with dragons. Her ethereal voice could suit even the fiercest of the winged beasts. This storyline, according to Mid Journey team, comes from multiple sources. They didn't exactly specify the source, but our understanding is they have a partner they are working with, and in the same time, they have their own large or small language model. So storylines are coming from there. It's a little bit similar to describe where you could 
upload an image and get a description back. And I will link this image to Sun Yui character. According to Midjourney team, when you link more images to certain character label, system understands the character appearance and description better. I will create another character. Almost everything in patchwork is a scrap and that can be selected and dragged around the board. Users can select multiple scraps by holding the shift key and you can just move multiple scraps around. I created another character label. I will name our villain as an Elora. It's going to be our villain character. And I will hit light bulb again and it will automatically populate. Elora is a fricious female dragon slayer who wields twin obsidian blades. Against all odds, she forms an unlikely alliance with Sun Yui. So this description doesn't really fit to our character. So I wrote, Elora is a fricious female dragon slayer who is villain of the story. She is against Sun Yui and her dragon companion. We have Sun Yui's dragon. Sun Yui's dragon Alba possesses the ability to breed healing flames, mending wounds and restoring vitality. Remove this part because it's unrelated. So I move this here and now I will create an event. Sun Yui finds Alba, the dragon, right, like this. And I move this to here to create at least some kind of timeline to organize things a little bit. We have another event brings Alba to town. So here now we have the town of Sun Yui. So I will create a place here, Sun Yui's town. Let's call it Warna. So when you create an event, it creates some kind of storyline based on the characters and things on the canvas, the places. So we are also auto-populating these events. Sun Yui discovers an abandoned dragon egg in the ruins of an ancient temple, where Alba later hatches the imprints. So they form a bond. Sun Yui's arrival with Alba in the bustling market square caused the frenzy with merchants fleeing. They're stalled at the site of the majestic dragon. We also auto-populate this as a final event. We have Elora, our villain, is jealous of Sun Yui's dragon. Populate the story with your own vision. And we can say here, simply conflict, right? What I'm going to do is I am going to link Elora using link button from action bar to conflict here. And these events are all related to Sun Yui. So I will link Sun Yui to this event, this event, and this event. Right. So there is also Sun Yui's dragon in the picture, but we cannot link multiple characters to the events at the moment. And this is something apparently will be available with Mid Journey version 7. The estimated release time is January time window where we will have character reference for multiple characters. Now, this is a very simple storyline, but it's just to demonstrate you what you can do with this tool. Now we are coming into the most important part where we will paint, generate images based on selected scraps, including these text scraps, simply operates like prompts, individual prompts, and we will hope to see our storyline is visualized. So I hit paint. And I will draw this circle here. And we have our prompt based on our text scrap. Only thing is I'm going to add star row here as a parameter. And I would like to add cinematic photo to the beginning of my prompt. So I will have some realistic result. Okay, I changed the prompt a little bit because I want to have dragon displayed as a character. So I click on paint and it will offer me four alternatives that I can choose from. You can see, but I think I'm between these two. So I will remove these. I think I'm gonna choose this one and I'm going to visualize rest of the story. So I will move this place here in between. Okay, now we will paint them one by one. I hit paint. Here we have Sun Yui discovers an abandoned dragon egg in the ruins of ancient temple. Right, so let's add cinematic photo here and let's add star row to the end hit paint i will do same for this i will paint it here this event is unnecessary now because we have this same event here so Yui's also paint this meanwhile 
we have some alternatives here. I think I like this the most. So I will remove these and I pick this one and rest of the storyline is also painting. We will also paint the place. But before that, we have Sun Yui and Dragon entering to the town of Varna together. I think I like this the most. And before painting the Varna, I would like to also show you one thing. So let's say you like the style of this image here. Using this rainbow button, you can actually extract its style reference. Hit this button and it will extract the style reference. And then I will link this place to, to this style reference. And you will see it automatically edit the style reference here. So now when we paint this, it should resemble this image as a style, meaning the aesthetic style and colors and everything. So our images are ready and we will proceed with this one. I'll also show you now the gather feature. Let's say you want to gather all images on the storyline related to a certain character, or it can be also an event. To do that, I select my character handle. I will move it to this corner and then I will hit this gather button here. And as you can see, it will bring all images or, and storyline relating to the subject here, and it will cluster it here. You can do the same thing for Elora, hit the gather button and Elora storyline will come right underneath our label. And then I can paint this scene right underneath it. And you will see it will automatically link Elora as a character reference. I will update the prompt a little bit. And I also would like to add this image as a style reference. So I have both character reference and style reference. And I hit paint. This doesn't really look jealous. Maybe this. Okay. And we have this image here. We have this inventory in the corner. And when you click on the plus button and hit anywhere in the canvas, it will create the same event. I think it's designed as a kind of like a life convenience thing. For me, it didn't quite make sense. So this is how you can create a mood board using this feature. I'll show you share button here. This is important because default permission level is view. So when you create a new board, this means people can display it. If you want to make it completely private, you need to choose none. And if you want to make it editable by other people, if you want to collaborate on that together with multiple people, you can choose edit. I think this is very important. Because there were some complaints about this where random people just comes to the certain boards and starts changing things. So be careful about that. If you want to invite specific people, you can also do that by writing those people's mid journey IDs here. As I mentioned that organizational features at the moment are very limited. You have only this gather feature. You cannot really create a timeline or like create folders, etc. Those features will come later next year. All images you created using this tool will be automatically added to your mid-journey library. So you can reuse them, edit them or upscale them. Okay, so my closing thoughts. Uh, essentially this week we saw many interesting approaches to prompting and new ways of working with AI. For example, storyboard from Sora, the Luma's new user interface, which from my perspective is a fantastic job they did there. The new flow state from Leonardo which I will make a video soon. It's also a super cool approach. It's essentially everybody is experimenting and trying new things. As an experiment, I do appreciate the patchwork from Midjourney, and I understand the vision behind it because they want to eventually transition this Canvas user interface to 3D and create 3D worlds with that where you can interact with, walk over and visit new worlds, interact with objects and characters in that world, I do understand the vision behind it, but to be honest with you, at the moment, this feature feels like an absolute chaos. Navigation is very difficult between worlds. I understand that this is an MVP, the first version of a new type of experience. I appreciate that, you know, mid-journey team is shipping new things, but without some proper organizational improvements, say it a linear timeline or something similar to Sora, where you have the storyboard and maybe better breadcrumbs where you can at least go back to where you come from, that you are not searching for this portal doors in the canvas. And David always mentions about, you know, Midjourney is a community funded tool, so they don't get any investments and everything happens through the community. But if that's the case, so I think they should focus more on community needs and feature requests. 
And I really appreciate that right now there is a leaderboard for uh, feature requests from community. And you will realize one very obvious fact here that people want more character reference features, multiple character reference. They want more controls over their character, being able to change the pose of character, emotion. And since the beginning, people want more consistency, right? They want to have consistency of objects, clothing. They want to be able to use their own logos in the product photography. These are the feature requests, not the other stuff. Even though I appreciate the experimental approach here, I think from this point on, Midjourney should really focus on the community requests. In that regard, I'm really looking forward for Midjourney version 7, that they promised that they will be delivering these features, or at least some of them. I still think the core Midjourney experience on the website for generating images is much more easy and it's much more simple to use. I will be using this more than patchwork until there is like some new significant improvements. Otherwise, you know, it's a nice idea. It's a nice experiment, but I think I will stick to core mid-journey experience still. Hopefully this video was truly helpful for you. Don't forget to give a thumbs up, subscribe for more in-depth tutorials. If you want to learn more about creative intelligence, click here.